I'm John Pacini from Durham, North Carolina, and this is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm uh, here with Dr. Sean Bacorny, also from Duke and Durham, North Carolina, who just finished presenting in the late-breaking clinical science session here at ACC 22. Um, the results of work looking at guideline, um, uh, guideline indicated therapy for cardiac implanted electronic device infections. Really interesting results with, I think, pretty significant implications for clinical practice. Sean, can you tell us a little about the study, why you did it, uh, and what the rationale was? Yeah, so what we know is that the rates of relapse infection are extremely high in patients that have a device infection and don't undergo complete hardware removal. If you undergo complete hardware removal, the risk of relapse, relapse infection is about 1%. If you don't undergo complete hardware removal, the risk of relapse infection is 50 to 100% based on the studies. And so there's a class one guideline recommendation across multiple societies for complete hardware removal in patients that have known device infections. And so what we were wanting to understand is what was the gap in adherence to the guidelines? So I'm, I'm curious, I, we'll talk about the study results, but I would just like, you know, anytime we do a study, we have like a gut check moment where we kind of in our mind think about what we're going to see when we see the results. Before you perform the analysis, what did you think that, you know, how many people did you think got complete hardware removal for a definitive device infection? Yeah, so we use the, the Medicare, the 100% Medicare sample for the analysis. And so to identify patients who had a device infection, we really had to focus on patients who had claims codes for endocarditis or known device infections. This was predominantly an endocarditis population. And I know that, that providers don't always end up following the guidelines perfectly. And so I was guessing somewhere around 50% or 40% of patients would undergo extraction, probably closer to 50%. And what we found was that 18% of patients underwent extraction within 30 days of identifying the infection, and only 13% of patients had early hardware removal within seven days. Wow, I mean, that's pretty surprising. So one in five patients who had a definitive device infection and a code for that or a code for endocarditis and IV antibiotics got complete hardware removal, is that right? That's exactly right. Yeah, which is a little bit shocking and has big implications for mortality because what we saw in the study was that when you had early hardware removal, there was a 41% lower hazard of death. And just looking at extraction overall, there was a 27% lower hazard of death when you had complete hardware removal. Wow, so, you know, these are observational data this isn't randomized, so there's always the possibility that, you know, there's confounding. Did you see any evidence of a dose response or some relationship that might give you reason to think that the timing of hardware removal is really impacting outcomes in a causal way? Yeah, absolutely. It was really interesting. Actually, we found that there was a statistically significantly lower reduction of mortality with early hardware removal in less than seven days relative to later hardware removal. And that's part of what makes us think that this is not just unmeasured confounding that we're missing in the study. Because of this dose response, the assumption is that patients that get extraction and complete hardware removal at day 10 are probably not that inherently different than patients that get it done at day five. Interesting. So maybe there's a golden hour for extraction or a golden week or whatever the time period might be, just like we've seen improved outcomes with other infections like sepsis or other forms of infection. Yep, I think that's right. Okay, well this is really interesting. So what would you say are the top three findings that our heart rhythm community should keep in mind from this study? So what we found in the study was that extraction rates are low and so we need to identify patients that have device infections and get them to extraction. We need to make sure that we're uniformly delivering that care across all patient populations because we saw that there were lower rates of extraction in female patients and in black patients and we ultimately need to make sure that we are improving mortality and reducing death by getting these patients to extraction earlier. All important things. I guess my question is, is that's a pretty tall order. So what's the, what's the next step? Because those are all really important things. So what is w putting one foot in front of the other? What would the next tangible study or project or implementation uh, 
from your perspective, what would that be? Yeah, so it's it's interesting. So we're we're launching this now. So we're actually working. DCRI is working with Philips on creating a, an implementation program, a dissemination program, working in three health systems where we're going to actually develop care pathways. We're going to do measurement and feedback. We're going to identify where the barriers are in the identification, in the delays to getting them to extraction, and we're going to try to improve the outcomes of care in these patients. Well, that's great. Um, Thanks for taking the time with us during yeah, your busy you. scientific sessions and sharing everything with the H, uh, with the Heart Rhythm TV audience uh, and the electrophysiology community. Again, I'm John Piccini. This is Sean Picorni. We're joining you from the ACC 2022 scientific sessions. This is Heart Rhythm TV.